Yeah, good morning everyone, uh, the chairpersons, the VIROC uh, organizing committee for giving us this opportunity and uh, uh, I am presenting this talk on behalf of my colleague Dr. Ajay Kothari and uh, we all are always concerned as uh, in our routine practice we see a lot of t uh, TB spine, infective spines and we are always worried as it's a medical disease. Surgery is only indicated only when there is instability, only when there is neurological deterioration. And uh, when it comes to surgical answer, still we have a lot of problems which are coming up. We are seeing patients coming with failures of uh, implantation and various issues. So let's, uh, let's uh, see uh, that our experience we are trying to share to avoid the failures of posterior surgery in TB spine. And uh, we, we, we all know that the basic principles of TB surgery is eradicating the disease restore and uh, preserve basically whatever maximum possible and prevent the deformity. Uh, what we need is debridement, decompression and good stabilization. Can we do it with only posterior approach? Uh, initially uh, and in, uh, 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 in the 20th century we have seen a lot of anterior surgeries for TB. Uh, the anterior lateral decompression was one of the standard operation, the Hong Kong operation lot of uh, anterior surgeries but with the uh, technique and technology we are uh, doing this posterior approach very effectively and safely and this is the latest article by uh, Chen Zhao uh, and they have compared anterior versus posterior showing equal effectiveness of debridement and posterior surgery. Again there are various articles uh, which talk about only posterior in thoracic and thoracolumbar spine tuberculosis who are the right candidates to operate and this is what uh, one of the golden paper from uh, Professor Raj Shekharan uh, validating scoring for uh, the spinal instability to assess surgical candidacy in active spinal TB and this is the evidence based approach uh, and what uh, they have shown us is the mechanical instability, the surgical candidacy and uh, the deformity calculation for the thoracic vertebrae. Uh, as we all know the spine at risk sign, uh, I will not go into the detail uh, the, uh, of, the, uh, of this uh, spine at risk signs, uh, but uh, we have to keep it in mind when you really plan for a uh, deformity uh, and uh, uh, spinal uh, failures uh, because of the tuberculosis. Reasons for failure, mainly patient related factors nutritional status we need to assess because in TB a lot of time patients are cachexic, malnourished, proteins are low, various other factors can contribute to failure. Uh, porosis of the bone that is also an important uh, uh, factor which can lead to failure of implantation, compliance to anti tubercular uh, treatment, MDR, XDR and diagnosis because there can be an issue you treat as, uh, this uh, infection as a TB and it can come as something else and surgery related complications and these are the things which really can lead to failures. So we will go one by one failures to reconstruct this is the most important thing failure to reconstruct anteriorly. Anterior reconstruction is considered one of the most important thing when you are trying to do an anterior debridement and you are not reconstructing anteriorly there are very high chance that you are going to fail. In a uh, few years ago, we used to do decompression and posterior stabilization. We have used heart shield subliminal wires by doing transpedicular decompression, the axial procedure and uh, fixing long construct. But with this uh, good anterior reconstruction, if there is not much of a deformity, you can uh, do a short uh, fusion like uh, in uh, this case, uh, it, uh, we could manage to do it with two levels above and below because the deformity was not significant and we could manage to reconstruct anteriorly. And this is one important thing we have to understand. Generally as a consensus, we prefer to use long constructs and uh, this is what normally we call as a global reconstruction. So anterior sur surgery through posterior approach and that is again uh, a very very uh, uh, strategic surgery. Uh, this is a 55 year old female associated with osteoporosis, severe compression and uh, this is what was done. We did uh, that uh, trans uh, uh, facetal clearance and went anterior. Uh, we could manage to take out all the muck, the tubercular granulations, uh, freed the cord there was a lot of epidural uh, adhesions we could really manage. So at times you need to do some amount of 
um, tra uh, um, cost of transvectomy also in this, uh, in, in few of the cases. And you really can reconstruct uh, in this uh, type of scenarios. Implant related short versus long, as I just mentioned that it's always better to stabilize longer. It's, it's by default you should uh, um, uh, construct long and uh, that's the policy. When there is not much of uh, angulation or deformity, we can really go transfacetal and that's one important uh, technique which we nowadays we use that we can fix this uh, implants on one side, keeping the midline intact, just going through the facetal area, going anteriorly, completely clearing the uh, anterior uh, uh, disease and decompressing the cord uh, from only one side. As one side is intact, the midline is intact, you really don't need anterior reconstruct in most of the cases where there is not significant deformity and this is a track approach which we are using it for nearly 7 to 8 years now. Uh, if you see in this, I will just run the video faster and this is where we are, one side the rod is fixed, we are going from the facet, we have taken the facet out and here the disease which is coming out and you can really do a complete job. You can put in some bone chips and bone grafts and you don't need to do anterior reconstruction and you are very less likely you are going to fail. And uh, failure to preserve the bone stock and uh, this is most important is that posterior column reconstruction. When you are doing this type of a, uh, clearance from posterior, it's important to keep the midline, keeping the oppo opposite side facets and we, we have been lucky so far for not having failure so far. Again, this is one example where a lot of pus and everything came out. If you see, complete stability of the spine is maintained. Normally, we used to do laminectomy and that's uh, history for us now. Thank you very much.